everyone uh, okay? Jump in now if you have random questions. That and now you can open my email. So you can press up to get the last line you put in. Yeah. You clear out that line. Have you escape left? doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, press down. But what if you've gone up a bunch? Is there any way to just Control C. Uh, Control C. Yeah, or you could backspace it all out. Um, so you can edit those lines. So we'll get into this. I don't know how much we're going to use terminals tonight because we're a little tight on time. But uh, your terminal has a bunch of features, including this history feature. You can't actually search it. Uh, so I could start searching it for essentially every command that I've run in the past, but and then try to rerun those commands. So there's uh, command history is something. Yeah, I'm take screenshots. Command history is something we'll come back to, but yeah. Uh, control C, if you're in the middle of typing something, Control C almost always gives you just a new line. It also kills a running program uh, in most instances. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, we'll touch on some more. So I guess just real quick, the last few commands we were going to talk about, you can look these up, they're on the sheet too, so we'll come back to them again. Uh, are kind of some of the commands that tell you about the state of the system. Matt's been using the ps command. The ps command lists all running processes, so it's just like the ls command. As the ls command is to files, the ps command is to processes. <coughs> where a process on your machine is kind of like a program. I mean, there's some terminology here that differs if you want to get specific <coughs> about it, but it's essentially all of the programs <coughs> that are currently running on your machine. Um, by default, if I just run PS, it only prints out the programs that are running in my current terminal, which is the terminal itself, bash is the terminal I'm using here, or the shell itself, bash to the shell, and then the PS command is running when you ran the PS command, so it counts itself. Uh, okay. More. When you say terminal, what do you mean? So, uh, technically, so by terminal I mean this space here, the command line. Uh, when you're on the command line, they're not all, I'm actually, this is a program too. Like it's a program that takes the commands I'm typing and runs them. And there are different versions of this program. The version I'm running is bash, the born again shell. Uh, there are a, also religious wars here. Um, but there's a whole bunch of different shells that you can use as your default shell. Bash is pretty standard uh, on many systems. So one of the things that's running right now is the terminal by the shell itself. Other questions? So more useful is I generally want to see what's running on the entire machine, not just what's running in my terminal. So the capital A will give me every process currently running on this machine. Now, as you can see, it's cutting off this list, right? Like there's a bunch of things running. So I could do a couple of things. I could do like Matt did, and if I know what I'm looking for, I could grep for a particular program. So I want to see if, I don't know, am I running anything interesting right now? Well, I just want to see anything that's currently running that has a K in it, right? Or GNOME is one of the des is what is a name associated with a lot of the kind of GUI programs that are running. So I could grep for anything related to GNOME that's running right now. Sometimes you don't know what you want to search for. You just want to look at everything that it's outputting. So there's a nice handy command. There's actually a couple versions of this called less. And what these are is they're pagers. They take output that spans multiple pages and present it to you one page at a time. So if I take the output of PS-A and I pipe it, so again, like Matt was saying, this is similar to the arrow operator, only it's used to send it to another command instead of to send it to a file. Um, so if I send this to less, now I get something I can scroll through using the arrow keys. Uh, like the man pages, when I get to the end of this, less, wow, there's a lot of things running right now. Um, so when I get to the end of this, it's just going to tell me I'm at the end. To exit less, I would then hit Q. So less will allow me to go and take a whole bunch of output, though, and present it to me in a manner where I can scroll through it and kind of read it. Uh, the older version of less was called more. It does the same thing. Less is the new more. <laughs> this is what happens when programmers think they're funny, right? Um, so more works like less, only it uses the space bar instead of the arrow keys. And when you get to more, the end of more, it exits out automatically. So more just lets you, more is a true pager. It gives you one page, hitting space bar gives you the next page. When you get to the last page, it exits. Less is a little more versatile because it lets you actually scroll back and forth in both directions and choose when you exit. When you're on man pages, you're actually using less. 
Yeah, so uh, right, that's why the command's the same. But when you call man, it actually calls less on the file that has all the data from the image. There's some extra magic. Can you can you just go over that command that you just did? I'm just curious how you used less. You, all right, or more. So uh, more hitting space gives uh -huh. you the next page of output. Okay. Where a page you use whatever like a will pipe. fit on the terminal one at a time. Yeah. Okay. I just so all of these I'm just piping. Okay. So by default, all of these send their output to standard out, which if you don't pipe it anywhere, standard out just gets dumped to my terminal, right? That's where it gets printed here. But the pipe operator says take standard out, take what's normally getting dumped to my terminal, and then send it as the input to another program. So in this case, it's the input to more or less, or it's the input to grep, or it's the input to sort, if I wanted to sort all of the processes that are currently running on my system based upon. Sort doesn't work great in this context because there's spaces here which throw off the whole number sorting issue. So sort's not magically smart. So uh, dash A is the standard out? So no, dash A means everything. So standard out is just what you get by default. So I could do the same thing here. Like I could pipe this yeah. to less. It's just there's not much on the screen to read. What the A does is when I run without the A, you'll notice I just get these handful of things. The A says, don't just show me what's running in the current session, show me everything on the entire system. So that means everything for my user, everything for other users, uh, so on and so forth. There's also an L command. So I guess we haven't noticed, but about commands, you can generally type in, if you have multiple flags, you can type them in, type them in as multiple flags. You can, unless it turns into another flag, you can also almost always just combine the flags together. So dash AL is the same as dash A dash L. Uh, what this does is this gives me a lot more information, uh, including the user that's currently running it. So let's go to the top where we get, so if we look at the top of this file and then less. Uh, so this UID is the user ID that started the program. Zero is root, so all these things that are started by zero are root. If I wanted to look like, if I knew there was another user on this system, in this case it's just me. No, there's a couple. So there's a handful of other users on this system, or some of these are system users, but if I wanted to like look at all of the programs that user number 104 is currently running, I could just grep ps-al output, grep for 104, right? And it's gonna give me a few false positives, because there's happened to be a 104 there. You can do more clever things to tell it to only look at this column, but it at least allows me to quickly filter down the input on, I just wanna see what user 104 happens to be running right now. How is the process ID assigned to each process? The earlier it, the earlier it is initialized, it has a smaller uh, ID. In general, so any time a new process gets spawned, it's it kind of depends on the operating system and what it wants to do. But in general, the operating system is going to, it's going to take the lowest available user ID and give it to that process. Um, that doesn't, so you can't always assume that the lower the number, the older the process. Because if a bunch of early processes all quit and then you started some new ones, they would reuse those small numbers again. But there, there really is no hard and fast mapping. Um, you should just know that a process ID is a unique number for every process that's currently running. Um, if this were a sysadmin class, there's a lot of other stuff you could get into on that. But just as a general user, you aren't really going to need to worry about process IDs that and the TTY, it seems like there are uh, six or eight terminals. Running. So there are. So um, without getting into too many details, so TTY tells you what root terminal it's running in. So right now we're sitting in, I mean, we're running this desktop, right? Like we have a whole desktop. I have a terminal brought up inside this desktop, but this terminal is really just a sub-process running inside my desktop. I can actually, if I hit Control F, or if I hit Control Alt and then one of the F keys, I will get alternate terminals for my system. So only one of these terminals is running the whole GUI. Uh, we'll get in, I don't think we get to this tonight, but the desktop environment, all of the pretty stuff that makes it look like Windows, that's just a program. Uh, real Linux is more or less sitting right here behind the scenes, right? So I can log in here. And I can do all of my commands here. Like I can run my regular commands here. I mean, this is what I would be dealing with if I were just, if I didn't have a desktop environment on this system. If I were just running, it's just a command line system. You boot it up and this is what you get. You actually have a handful of them. Uh, 
F1 gives me the default system terminal. I can't log into this because this is just showing me what's going on behind the scenes in the system. Control Alt F2, F3, F4, F5. You'll see the TTY number changing here at the top. This is just rotating me through basically spare terminals. Seven is your X window terminal. So seven is the one that has all the graphics on it and it's the one you log into by default. So again, not a sysadmin class, so I'm not gonna dive into that too deep, but part of what it's telling you about each process is which one of these kind of controlling terminals it started in. People are really excited we can do advanced Linux sometime and get into some of that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, don't worry too much about it. You can read the man page if you want all the gory details. Other questions? Uh, fine, uh, was that uh, in Windows, if suppose the system is going really slow and we uh, restart the process and we kind of see uh, which of the process is taking up a lot of resources. So if I wanted to do something similar on So there is a handy command called top, which was also on my list. I don't think I was going to get to it, but I guess you'll force me to. Um, Top, actually, this is updating in real time. This isn't a static command, so if you watch every second, it changes. Top shows me, it's essentially like my process manager, and it sorts the processes based upon the amount of CPU each one's using. So uh, right now, I mean, if, I, if something was just killing my system, I could run top, I could pick out what it was, and then I can actually force quit it. So uh, hitting Q will exit you out of top, just like, so in general, if you're in a program that doesn't exit by default, Q is how you get out of it. Um, there's nothing, okay, well, here, I can, I can demonstrate this way, but let's say that one of the things I saw in top was for some reason my terminal was taking up, or I had some program that was taking up tons of memory. I don't have a program that's taking up tons of memory right now. Well, we can start one. So let's fire up Chrome. Chrome actually can get bogged down if you try to load a website that has bad plugins. So say I want to kill Chrome. So uh, top's probably not going to show it to me. Yeah, so it's not actually making top because it's not one of the top processes right now. It's way down this list where it's not getting shown. But let's just say Chrome's being slow, and I could also get this from top. The important thing is we need to get the process ID. That's how we're going to kill that. So uh, I need to get the process ID, so I'm going to do PS-A. So Chrome is multiple places in this list. Let's filter out all the occurrences. Chrome is probably not a good example because of the way it works. But So if I filter on Chrome, you'll actually see I started one window, but Chrome uses multiple processes, mainly because Chrome spawns a different process for every tab. Uh, this is so your entire browser doesn't crash if you load one bad website. Um, it also spawns extra processes for some background stuff. But essentially, if I wanted to quit Chrome, I could use the kill command, and then I type in the process ID. And it's going to go ahead and shut down Chrome for me. Uh, if you kill any one of these, or at least, I don't know if I just got lucky or if it's going to quit if I kill any of these. Sometimes you have to kill multiple ones if add multiple processes like this. Um, if you try to kill a process, so the reason I could do that is because I started Chrome. If I try to kill a process that I didn't start, so let's take one of these that, like, just a random process, uh, like, wait, one, okay. So one's always your BOS itself. So if I go to kill one, it's going to give me a permissions error. So you can only kill processes you start, which makes sense, right? It wouldn't be a very good system if you could go and shut down someone else's model who's also logged into the machine. Uh, obviously, if you're root, you can kill whatever you want. Um, this will probably give me an error too, though, right? So because of I don't have nine. Yeah, yeah, so it'll send it. It sends a sync up. Right, sync kill. So yeah, we're uh, we'll kill right. So we're, we will get into kill some more later. But um, there is sometimes what you need to do is you can actually specify an additional flag that like gives kill a priority level about how much you really want it to kill it. And <laughs> by does, so some programs will take the kill signal, and if that number is below, I mean, if it's, depending upon when that number changes what signal you're sending, and it can handle different signals in different ways. So we're not going to get into this too much tonight because it turns into an operating systems programming assignment pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, you can find processes you can kill them. So this, this process only shows the uh, process that's already uh, virtual machine. It doesn't, yes. Yeah, it doesn't jump down into that. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, as far as the virtual machine is aware, it's the only machine. Like Ubuntu inside the virtual machine doesn't know that it's a virtual machine. Uh, it doesn't know whether it's a virtual machine or whether it's the only machine. So you're in Ubuntu, you're running PS, all Linux knows about is the process inside it. There's no way it's reading out.
in Windows, the virtual machine will be a process. So the opposite isn't true. But yeah, you can only violate that barrier in one direction. Other questions?